Hello booktube. Welcome to Lizzie Fay Loves Books. I'm Elizabeth. It's Friday and it's time for Friday Reads and I have filmed this video about four times and something keeps going wrong. So hopefully I can get through it this time. Um, I have had a crazy busy week. I have been frantically trying to read and finish all of my November current reads that I've had on my currently reading list on Goodreads and all my nonfiction and, and everything and uh, last night I would have loved to have crammed in as many books as I could finish before the stroke of midnight, but I had a big work-related event and I had to go to that. So I uh, got home and I still finished up one more book that I still counted as November and uh, went to bed about 2 a.m. <laughs> and got up today, got the kids off to school, and I was all set to just take it easy and read. But I got a call from uh, uh, Katie's former middle school saying that a teacher had had an emergency and would I come and finish out the day. So before I did that, I had to drive for the lady who I drive for uh, on Friday mornings. I take her on errands and groceries and whatnot. And then I went to the school for the second half of the day. I did get a little bit of reading done, but not the extent that I had wanted to today, but it's okay. It's been a great day. It's been hectic. Now it's Friday evening. Um, after school, I stopped by Dunkin' Donuts with the intent to get a frozen hot chocolate, one for me and one for Katie, and they misunderstood me and sent me a frozen Dunkin' coffee, which I didn't realize until I'd already pulled away and I wasn't going to go back. I like it okay, but I love the frozen hot chocolate. Uh, I, in fact, I already drank mine, and uh, Katie just doesn't like it. She likes the frozen hot chocolate, but she wouldn't drink the frozen Dunkin' coffee. So I have had, uh, so I'm on my second one now, <laughs> and I'm a little bit. Ah, a little bit high strung. So I will breathe now and uh, and just try to relax and tell you about what I have finished this week and what I'm hoping to finish this weekend to move off of my currently reading list so that I can get to the business of these Christmas books back here. Now, I have already unwrapped <laughs> my first advent, my first book advent, and that video got messed up. So I'm not going to rewrap it. I'm just going to show you. I knew what it was anyway, and I was going to unwrap it on camera. So it's right behind me, uh, and I will just reveal it instead of unwrapping it. And then the rest of these, I will do my best not to mess up the video when I'm doing my unwrapping. And um, well, you know what? All right. Don't look behind me. Let me pull my wrapping paper back out and Let's we'll see. We'll see if I can. Uh... Oh dear! I dropped my little Santa Claus. I will do a very horrible job of rewrapping this book. Very sad. But anyway, that'll have to do. All right. So I was originally going to do this at the end of the video, but I'm just going to go ahead and do it right now uh, and show you my first book, Advent book. Now, um, if you didn't see my other videos announcing what I was going to do, I've got 24 books that are my own books, all except for one. One's a library book, and they're all Christmas-themed books. Not all of them are fiction, even. There's a couple of nonfiction. I think there may be some short stories. There is a middle grade book. Um, there's a couple of cozy mysteries and some women's fiction. There's some Christian fiction. There's just a wide variety of uh, Christmas themed books. And I am excited about reading these. I may not finish them all this month, but I am going to open them all one every day for the first 24 days of the month. So the very first one is one that I, um, I plan to open it first because I think it will take me a little longer to read it than some of the others that are shorter. It's a book that I definitely wanted to get to this year. I wanted to give it higher priority. It's the next book in a cozy mystery series that I'm reading and it's a Christmas themed book. So I wanted to go ahead and read it this month so that I can move on with the rest of the series as, you know, on into 2018. So I will reveal what it is. <laughs> it is the Christmas Cookie Murder by Livia J. Washburn. And this is book three in the um, Fresh Baked Mystery Series. It's about a group of retired teachers that all live together in a house. And since I come from a family of teachers, 
I was really drawn to this series. It's not my favorite cozy mystery series of all time, but I can relate to it. I enjoy it because it's teachers. So I'm going to get started on this this weekend and I'll let you know what I think about it. And I'll keep you posted with my progress. So for the next few days, I will open shorter books that I can finish so that I can be finishing something each day. And then when I finish um, this book, I'll open another book that's longer so that I always have at least something long that's that I can chink away at and then shorter books in between. Then, of course, I have the um, Christmas Hope series. We are starting this read along today. And a few people have already commented that they have already read this. This is just a really short book. It's a little over 100 pages. I am going to listen to it on audio. I've got the CDs from the library. And I've got the movie checked out. So I will watch the movie after I read the book. I'm pretty sure this is going to be a tearjerker. But I know that it's going to be really good. And I'm excited about reading it. And so, um, let's see. I need to tell you about what I have finished over the last seven days and then what I am going to try really hard to finish this weekend so that I can wrap up all of these November reads, especially the nonfiction. So, I finished a total of seven books in the last seven days, not including today because I haven't uh, finished anything today. But last Friday, I finished The Absolutely True Diary of a Part-Time Indian by Sherman Alexie. And, um, <clears throat> excuse me, I really enjoyed it. Uh, you know, it had the your typical teenage boy humor. And there was one really horrible racist joke. But I felt like that the book overall was very honest and real. And now, it is a, a fictional main character. But as I understand, some of the experiences that he goes through are some true life experiences experiences that the author went through or knew something, you know, about firsthand. So, um, that I will talk more about when I do my fiction wrap-up. I'm going to divide my November wrap-up into fiction and non-fiction. So, the rest of what I read this week or finished this week was non-fiction. And so, I'll just go through the titles and then I'll tell you about them when I do my nonfiction wrap up. So um, last Saturday I read Cat Castles by Karen Oliver. It's a how to book on building and making some simple cat habitats. And then I had uh, four nonfiction books that I was reading and chinking away at all month. And I finished three of those. And the fourth one I will finish this weekend. Um, I read. Siblings of Children with Autism by Sandra L. Harris and Beth A. Glassberg. And I read Couplehood by Paul Reiser. And 1,000 Gifts by Anne Voskamp. Then I had two nonfiction audiobooks that I finished up this week. I listened to Quiet by Susan Cain, The Power of Introverts in a World That Can't Stop Talking. And then I also finished The Five Love Languages of Teenagers by Gary Chapman. And I, I recommended this one for my husband to listen to. Um, you know, we have two teenage girls, even though one has special needs. She's still 16. She's a teenager. And this, I think, is a really important book for us to read. Um, I, and I think he ought to read this one, too. He's an, uh, an introvert. I am more of an extrovert, or so I always thought. But after listening to this, I realized that I do identify with some traits of an introvert. So... Maybe in my old age, I'm getting a better balance on things. Who knows? All right, so that is what I finished. Now, I have five books on my currently reading list that I am still reading. I had wanted to finish these in November, didn't get it done. And I think I can finish all of these this weekend. I have, uh, and I did have two on my Kindle. One I put back on my want to read. I'm going to put it on hold, save it maybe for January. But the other one is not a very long book. It's a memoir by Janice J. Richardson called The Making of a Funeral Director. I would have probably gotten a little more of it read this week, but I misplaced my Kindle for part of the week, and I finally located it last night, so I will get back to that. Um, then the other nonfiction book that I'm reading in print is The Excellent Wife by Martha Peace. I just have what looks like a little bit but I will probably still have to divide this up over two or three days to finish it because it's very dense, it's heavy, it has a lot of um, uh, a lot of depth and and it's important. So I've been just digesting little bits at a time of this book all month. 
Then the rest are fiction. I am almost done with Thresh Green by Miss Reed. I've just got a little bit left. I think about four chapters. I did read some of this today. I took it with me while I was subbing, and on my lunch, I was able to read some of that. Then I have a little more than half left of Into the Wild by Aaron Hunter, the first Warriors book. I do want to finish this this weekend. And then... Um, this marker's in the wrong place because I did listen to one more disc today and I haven't moved my place marker yet. But uh, I have five discs left out of 13 of The Cuckoo's Calling by Robert Galbraith. I'm listening to this for the new mystery book club at our library. I'm not enjoying it that much because if you've read this, you know that there's a couple of characters that just spew the F word and they use it for every part of speech. And it's like three times per sentence sometimes, and I'm just over it. I'm just assaulted by the F word by listening to this on audio. So if I could get past that, you know, the story, I, I like the character of Cormoran Strike, and I really like his assistant Robin, um, but some of the people he interviews and talks to are just making me crazy. Uh, anyway, those are my thoughts so far, but uh, anyway, I hope to finish this very soon. So, that's what I hope to finish this weekend. Then the only other book I may start, um, definitely I'm going to start The Christmas Shoes this weekend. And I'm going to start The Christmas Cookie Killer. And I'll chink away at that. Then I'm going to probably go ahead and start uh, Midnight at the Bright Ideas Bookstore by Matthew Sullivan. I may wait and not start this until after I'm done with the rest of my November reads. Then I can give this... A little more attention. Um, I looked tonight on her Goodreads group and she's got two different discussion threads. One for the first half and one for the second half. So uh, it looks like that there's not really any certain time frame that you need to have it done by just maybe the first half by the first half of the month. So I'm pretty sure I can do that. I have this ordered on audio from the library, but I'm second in line and it's saying that it's still in cataloging. So I'm starting to sweat that I'm not going to be able to get it before the end of the month. So I will just go ahead and read in print um, a little bit along just so that I don't put it off until the last minute. And then... Um, I guess that's about it. I did go by my library today and I bought three more Christmas books. Uh, this is a series. I'll talk more about this later to some of you guys who are participating in the read-along. Um, did you know about this Thomas Kincaid series? Almost all of them are Christmas books. And I bought three of them. A Christmas Promise, uh, The Christmas Angel, and A Christmas to Remember. It is the Cape Light series. The first four are not Christmas. And then all the rest of them are Christmas themed. And there's like 18 of them so far. Um, when Thomas Kincaid uh, was living, he wrote these with Catherine Spencer. And then after he passed away, Catherine Spencer has continued on with the series. So just something to think about in the future um, once we get done with this. If some of us want to do another Christmas read-along next year, then um, this might be a good candidate for that. So that is all I have for this video. I will, <laughs> I promise tomorrow I will actually unwrap my book and not show you a second, the second redone video where the wrapping paper's already gone. Uh, I apologize for that. But, you know, you do what you can do. So that's all I have for this video. I'll see you back here tomorrow with another book advent unwrapping. And I hope you're having a great day. Let me know what you're reading for December. And if you are reading some Christmas books, I would love to know what they are. So um, hope you're having a great day. Read a good book and God bless you.